Hi, uh, I'm uh, Jos from OpenStreetMap Belgium. Um, joining in this session is uh, Thierry, uh, who will mostly handle the interactive part. Um, and we might have a few words from, uh, from uh, Ed, Eduardo Neerhut from, from uh, Mapillary. Um, so, um, oh, I have an echo. <laughs> yes, I have no echo. Awesome. Um, so yeah, um, so one of the things that gave the idea for, for this session is that um, uh, working in Belgium is really hard. Uh, I know Switzerland, for example, is, uh, where is Switzerland? Uh, uh, there you are. Um, it has the same kind of issues and, and Germany as well, I guess, with the Lander. Um, if, if you have a complicated country, it's always harder to, uh, to work with data, to work with people. Um, uh, but the nice thing about that is if you get something to work for your own country, uh, for the entire country, then uh, it should, in theory, work anywhere. And especially in Belgium, we tend to overcomplicate stuff. Um, so so it's like, we think often the stuff we make should be able to work in, uh, in other places. But we also uh, feel like that with many of the projects that anyone is doing, um, it seems so hard to get them uh, known and used in other places to, to have them grow. Um, so uh, some of the questions um, that I have here and that I hope we can discuss about in the second half uh, are here. Um, so uh, to repeat, you can scan or uh, you can type the URL. Um, and then you have to hit the little button in the, uh, in the middle at the bottom. Uh, with, for, to open the actual questions. And mind you, uh, once you answer one question, you can't go back again. Um, so feel free to just open it on your, on, on, uh, your device now and, and answer it later. Uh, we will also do, I, I hope to do about half of the time uh, interactively. Um, so uh, it's not really needed to do it in, uh, in online, but we're a big enough group, I think that is probably useful and to, to get us started uh, talking. Uh, so, should I leave this on the screen longer? It seems okay. Yeah, awesome. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I split this up in um, in a few groups of, of projects um, that we are working on or that we know that are being worked on. Uh, they're just examples, uh, stuff we know well. Uh, so it's it's just to, to get the conversation started. Um, uh, one of the things that we're really happy with is the, the camera grants uh, project. Um, this is a coverage we have right now. Uh, this is all uh, 360 imagery. So we have a lot left to do. Um, but the stuff in blue is, is from our group. It's what we did in, I think, a year and a half with uh, four cameras now. So all of that is, is 360. Um, it's all on Mapillary, but we also keep a backup of all the things, uh, so we can publish it on any platform uh, whenever we're ready for that. Um, um, so uh, where does it come from? Uh, we were frustrated with the lack of interest in uh, looking for open solutions in, in the government sector. Um, they prefer to uh, simply pay uh, for <laughs> uh, for access, and the, the thing is, you have a few companies that make the images and then they sell the access to anyone so they are selling the same images again and again and again um, which is not entirely efficient use of government money uh, which as a taxpayer and a, a government employee i don't like um, so uh, yeah we did some lobbying about that but it never really took off some some government organizations have seen the light um, but then we thought okay let's let's really show how easy it is to do this, and let's just uh, find volunteers who can use these cameras. Um, so we lend them out for just three months. Um, uh, so the cameras are always rotating. Um, and sometimes we strike gold. Some people don't do very much with it, and other people, they do their entire town, and then the next town, and then another town, and then another town. Um, and then they go on holiday, and they do their entire. Anyway, um, so some people are. A little crazy, uh, which is uh, very fun. Uh, we could only do this because we have a little money from our uh, corporate membership uh, program, um, and um, uh, we bought. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we bought four cameras. Um, most people tend to do it by bicycle. 
Um, there is some people doing it with cars. Um, I hear in the US as well, there's a few people doing it with bicycles, but also other means. Um, but in Belgium, it seems to work best with, uh, with the bicycle. Um, oh yeah, and one thing that we um, uh, always tried with the selection of candidates is um, if someone ha has the potential to be a virus, we uh, give it to them first. Um, <laughs> So, uh, for example, we gave it to uh, Seppe Santens, who is a core member uh, of OpenStreetMap Belgium. Oh, hi, Seppe. Um, <laughs> and uh, he convinced us, by doing it, he convinced his colleagues to buy one for the organization which promotes tourism in uh, Western Flanders. Um, we lent one out to a guy in Wallonia. Uh, who then went on to win 10,000 euro with some with, with the project he did with it and could buy several other cameras uh, with that money. So that's that's really our aim to, I mean, we want to facilitate normal volunteers as well, but if we sense that there's a chance to infecting more people, then, then that's where we, we try to go first. Um, and yeah, for now we uh, have an offline archive uh, but whenever we get someone to actually uh, install a GeoVisio uh, Panoramax server, uh, then we will uh, definitely do that. But yeah, it's taking some time because of manpower issues. Um, the URL is there um, with uh, some stuff of the project and that URL is relevant to everyone uh, because you will find a link there uh, to uh, apply for your own camera, uh, because until now we were only focused on Belgium, uh, but thanks to uh, Mapillary and uh, Ed here, um, we can now distribute uh, 20 cameras all over Europe. Um, so you can apply for one there. Um, it's um, so there is some hard criteria. You you have to have been uh, mapping. Uh, you have to have a user account with a, a decent amount of images already on Mapillary, uh, so that we know you're for real. Because <laughs> um, that's uh, in the previous iterations, it was sometimes a problem that people um, uh, have ambition but then don't come true. Uh, so we want to be sure that it happens. Um, and yeah, we hope to have. A lot of candidates uh, we will decide together uh, so at the OpenStreetMap Belgium site we will uh, rank candidates and we will look for input from Mapillary and then make a selection between those um, there's um, I guess there's two ways to get a camera either you're one you can prove that you're one of those crazy people who will use it and keep using it and, and uh, have a, a, a very nice coverage with it um, um, or you are part of some sort of network um, so if you think, okay, we're a local group of people, we're a local chapter, uh, we can make sure that the camera moves from person to person uh, so that you do a little bit what we've been doing in Belgium. Uh, or you have another idea on how the camera can, can be used optimally. Uh, just uh, there's room to explain your ID. Um, and I uh, were looking for yeah, maximum productivity. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Uh, so we will include gear for walking, for cycling and for uh, cars. Uh, so, no, the selfie stick. Uh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you can hold it outside of your window. Yeah. Uh, so for now, uh, we're talking about twenty cameras. Um, in the U.S., it's going well, and I uh, just heard from Ed that if things go well here, we might look at one hundred cameras next year, but. Yeah, we didn't hear that he just made it up because it's not on the voice stream. So, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. It's I guess it's up to the people who get the camera. Uh, we expect them to upload to Mapillary, of course, um, but you can use the images for whatever you like. Yeah. Well, there. Uh, well, because one, it's published uh, with an open data license, and two, uh, you as a photographer, you get ownership of the images, so you can do whatever you want with them. So I don't really see an issue. They you, you, you yeah that used to be a model yeah okay. 
I don't see the issue. Um, <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. 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 So you don't need to be a formal uh, a formal group. You just have to have like. I, if if you can say okay uh, we're this 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 informal group and we're or just friends or whatever uh, doesn't have to be OpenStreetMap related either. Uh, so there's I like our most enthusiastic mapper in in Belgium. Uh, well, no, the second most. The the uh, he's uh, just very much into cycling, so he just wanted to have all the cycle paths uh, there. So if you have another group of people that's interested, uh, that can be an option. Uh, so yeah, this is a totally different kind of project. Um, so the uh, equal street names. Um, so it was um, uh, it gave, it started with a simple question like how many streets are named after women in uh, Brussels. Uh, it came from a, a feminist background. Um, so and they got the funding and and then yeah we we built it. Uh, Jonathan built it. I keep saying that Jonathan built it. Um, it looks uh, it's really well made and. Um, uh, it's it's quite simple to set up. So that kind of uh, yeah, it's it, well. Let's show this first. So it, it kind of went viral um, because it's so easy to to run it somewhere else, um, and it also has an, an actual impact. Of course, yeah, we still have places named after uh, <laughs> genocidal king, which is very fun. Um, but um, part of the reason that finally they changed the name to a woman is uh, they they quoted uh, that uh, equal uh, the, the fact that they knew about uh, exact statistics was coming from equal street names. So it's it's nice to do stuff that uh, that actually has an impact. And this is I, it's a thing. It's simple. It worked. Uh, it's it's going in different places. There are still different projects doing exactly the same thing in a slightly different way. Um, so still, I'm I'm thinking why do we have I, why why can't we just all uh, work together? But okay, um, um, and maybe yeah. Just one technical thing about this is that um, it basically uh, works by uh, adding um, Wikidata tag to the street, explaining the etymology of the street name. So it's uh, kind of fun because it also makes. Uh, other uses possible, uh, so you can make another map of um, why uh, what streets are named after. You could have a map show showing the flowers that the, the streets were named after, or whatever. Uh, so it's it's a it's a fun strategy, I think, uh, data wise. Um, so that's a, a thing that worked. Um, the welcome tool as well uh, started uh, with some brick brac That's not English. Uh, something improvised uh, with whatever service we could find. Uh, then made uh, in a simple way and then <laughs> built by Jonathan uh, together with uh, a bit input from the, the local chapters and communities working group. Um, for Belgium, it, it was a solution for Belgium, but we built it in a way that it can be a solution for anyone. Um, so what it does basically is just uh, make a feed of everyone who is starting in your region. Um, the region can be anything. Uh, so you can, you can make uh, your filter, for example, in Belgium, we could make uh, a different version for just the Brussels region, and then the people watching Belgium don't have to watch Brussels anymore. So it's it's just taking it out. So that makes it really nice because you can sometimes, I, for example, someone says, "Okay, I'll do. I, we want to do Colombia, uh, but uh, yeah, it turns out to be a bit too big. But in, in Bogota, there's someone who's very motivated, so they can just do their own city. Um, and what it does exactly is so. So it makes a long list. And it makes it very easy to send them a message, uh, which is pre-configured to basically welcome to the, them to the community and make sure that they know that you're people and that you like to know uh, each other and well, you can point them to some resources. Um, it's extremely multilingual. Uh, it, can, it tries to automatically detect the language of the user. Uh, you can preset messages in different languages. Uh, the interface is available in 10, 15 languages, I think. Um, and it's uh, yeah, it's available all over the world. Um, there's quite a few in uh, in Europe already. Um, so yeah, this I think is uh, an example of uh, again of of how I think I like a, this is a kind of success story that I I hope we can 
do more. Like we, you have an ID, you try it out, you say it works, you find people to help scale it up, and then you roll it out globally, and and hopefully people pick it up. It's still, I think, uh, there's probably still people who first hear about it now, um, which is, I think, part of the the problem that we have that. You have to keep repeating your message until everyone says you're a spammer. Just a few. Uh, it uses uh, some of the same stuff. Um, no, wait, it doesn't. Uh, when we started, that didn't exist yet. Um, so yeah, it's it's it, uh, so ID when you do uh, uh, when you change uh, when you make a change set, it will give you the local uh, uh, communication channels. So it is less needed than it used to be because you have that way to find communities as well. But not everyone uses ID, and um, it's uh, you can personalize it a bit more. You can uh, so I, the best messages you can send are the ones where you look at what they've been doing and make a little reference to that. That vastly increases the chance of, of uh, interaction. Um, and it's also a monitoring tool. Um, so the the same guy, basically all the welcome messages in Belgium are sent by one guy. Um, and he also checks all the first change sets. And yeah, the first change set that someone makes is the one with the highest chance of being problematic. Um, so it's, it's, it's also a kind of a data, data validation tool. I think that I was we participate uh, in the in the starting of that as Italy, but I was right to ask uh, um, because now maybe as as a saying as we seen um, if there is one volunteer that take part and uh, start to do it uh, maybe is the only one that they do it. But in some cases, for example, as you can see, uh, Italy is not is not done. There are few done, but maybe checking, but it's not something system done systematically. Could be not possible to implement in some kind of uh, automatic. Um, implementation after 20 days, 10 days, if no one welcomed this, this user, could be something done automatically in the sense that at least they know where to find uh, um, some some pointers or where to find the, the channels. Uh, if you don't, maybe if you do it with ID or maybe you do it for, with your phone and you don't have the list of uh, communities. So maybe it could be. Well, I, I think part of the reason that we made this is because it's so hard to get uh, uh, changes approved in, in in central OpenStreetMap infrastructure. Um, and I think right now there is no API to send messages to a user. Uh, so you uh, so you would need to make a bot or something. Uh, OK. Ah, oh, yeah, that, that could be a workaround. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I think it was kind of an. an uh, a conscious choice not to automate too much uh, because you don't want to give the feeling that you're spamming people. Um, but it's 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 definitely worth uh, considering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, this it's. I think it's a difficult choice. Um, but it's definitely worth discussing again, I think. Um, then uh, some stuff that we're working on now that we think that have potential to to grow uh, more. Um, so uh, yeah, this is kind of my current baby, I guess. Uh, so uh, traffic sign projects, I don't really like traffic signs. Um, and the more I learn about them, the more I hate them. Um, but uh, it is really cool in uh, an incredibly chaotic country like we have uh, that some municipalities are actually digitizing all the new traffic signs that they are placing. Um, and usually when a traffic sign is new, it's not mapped or, uh, well, for example, it's for a new one-way road. And the moment that they put the sign there, it's probably not mapped in OpenStreetMap yet. Um, so if you filter just those signs that are impactful and that are new, then you have a limited number of objects to identify where you're pretty sure that it's very relevant to OpenStreetMap data um, and you don't have a crazy amount of things to check. Um, there's also the problem that the data set as a whole is really, really bad. 
Uh, some parts haven't been updated for like in 10 years. Um, but if you just filter the new stuff, then you know, oh, this is from a municipality, who cares? And like, we also like, try to encourage people to actually, or government people, to in their work to actually digitize stuff and make decent data. Um, so we think it's kind of a, a little bit of support to, to those people. Um, and uh, what we built now, uh, so yeah, I, I built a basic concept uh, offline and old school statistical software that you shouldn't use for that. Um, and um, uh, Ivan, um, what's this one? Oh, practical. Um, <laughs> huh. I like the guy who might have made the slides. Um, uh, so yeah, even the, from TomTom, uh, he built the implementation uh, with some of the, the logic we used before. So it's basically, uh, there. for now, there is still a button that you have to push, but we can make the button push itself every week or so, uh, where it uh, just uses uh, GitHub Actions to retrieve all the new traffic signs, to filter the ones that are new, and to uh, push them towards uh, a MapRoulette task. Um, and yeah, because it's that simple, uh, it's also uh, easily scalable. Uh, I think here <laughs> the problem is probably um, that uh, there might not be uh, enough relevant other data sources. Uh, and for example, we contacted uh, the Netherlands with uh, the ID because we found out that they do have a traffic sign data set, um, but it's updated in bulk. Um, so if if the traffic if the new traffic sign is already there for a year, it's less likely that um, that it still needs mapping. So it, it's not entirely sure if the concept is is as viable there. Um, but if you know of other data sets that are useful, um, Norway, yeah, well, have a <laughs> have a look uh, at the GitHub page. We don't need much uh, to to set it up. It's basically you need uh, a filter of which traffic signs are interesting enough uh, for this kind of task. Uh, so yeah, for example, for a one way, you can have 20 signs. Uh, and if you can filter just the one that is most important, then uh, that reduces the amount of work. Um, and that's about it. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and I, I really like uh, what Osmose is already doing with the mapillary traffic signs because it's it's smarter than we are. Uh, it's it already detects if the traffic sign is mapped at all. So if there's a max speed seventy, it goes to look. Oh, is there a traffic sign? Is there a road nearby that is uh, seventy? Uh, and it will only sh create a task if it's needed. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be new uh, traffic signs. We could work out something uh, with that kind of flow uh, or with the new uh, Panoramax flow. Um, um, I'm also thinking if you have like if you have new coverage uh, in a place you already had coverage before and you detect a traffic sign in the new images but not the old ones, then you might have uh, also found a new traffic sign. Uh, but maybe that's overcomplicating stuff. Um, anyway, the one thing I kind of dislike about the Osmosa uh, uh, type is that it's, uh, or the Osmosa challenge is that it's a little hidden um, and it's, it feels harder to motivate people to work on it because it's, it takes a bit more time to find it. There's no like, <laughs> I, I know not everyone likes gamification, but just like having a counter there, like this many left and, and, and this nice churn uh, thing. Um, and what I also really like about the MapRoulette approach is that you, uh, we always ask people to give detailed feedback. Uh, so when they say, oh, this is wrong, the traffic sign is wrong, then, then you, can, you have actual data you can give back to the, to the source to say, hey, uh, there's something weird in your data or even in your reality. Uh, we, we have a collection of uh, wrong traffic signs uh, as well. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, so we're, we don't actually map the traffic sign itself in OSM. Uh, the idea is to map its effect. Uh, so we start from the points 
we don't do an estimate of like this sign should apply to that road. We keep it uh, simple, but but it's 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 something. I think if as the volume increases, uh, it might be needed to do that kind of logic. Like if you have a one-way sign, even if it's new, first check if the road nearby is one-way. So to avoid because the numbers are pretty large. Uh, there's I don't know how it's in other countries, but we we like our traffic signs. It's really I don't know if you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, one more thing, I think uh, that uh, that I think we could maybe work together on as local organizations. I think there's a, a lot of difference in in, in uh, maturity there. Some people probably have uh, well-funded uh, organizations already. Others are uh, only starting. Um, uh, so, so I'm really interested to to hear uh, your experiences. Um, um, but I'll talk about ours uh, for now. Um, so uh, we discussed about it for years. Like, how are we going to do this? Uh, how are we going to get funds? We tried. We thought about a hundred different things. We we got donations uh, for a while, and that was enough to pay the bills, uh, but not to do anything more than that. Um, and in the end, we settled on a very simple uh, approach to corporate membership. Um, so uh, we offer to a company that we, uh, so if, if they are interested in a specific kind of uh, data, then we will uh, help focus attention of the community to that problem. Let's uh, say you need, uh, you need to make sure that all the one ways have an exception to uh for for bicycles uh, whether that's checked or not uh then, then yeah we can help you uh do that um something we already did for uh, basically is uh if, if people come with questions to us then uh then we make some time to help them analyze but here we formalize it a bit like yeah you can give us up to a day of of uh, free work uh to help analyze uh what what you can do with osm um we want to. We can be sort of interface. Um, if you don't really know how to approach a community for stuff you're doing, then then we can be the interface. Obviously, we put logos uh, there uh, and uh, on our website and at events. Um, and uh, yeah, people can uh, use in their communications. They can say, "Okay, we are a supporter of OpenStreetMap in Belgium." Um, and uh, yeah, we also think that it's something that many companies should do. Uh, so hence the reference to Karma. Uh, and there's a few more companies that we think you're making so much money in Belgium with our data and you don't even talk to us. Uh, they're not here, of course. Um, uh, yeah, and it's, uh, it's two prices depending on the size of uh, the company. Um, so yeah, if I this it, it was that simple. Uh, so in the end, when we decided, okay, let's do this, it took almost no time to set it up, and 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 it uh, worked. Yes. Yeah. So this is something we, as OpenStreetMap Belgium, have set up for ourselves. Yes. Uh, yeah. And it's. Um, so I, I wanted to present it here because it, it might be an option if you're a small local chapter. And you don't really have a funding strategy yet. Well, just put it out there, and you know maybe it works. We started off with uh, our first corporate members were uh, the <laughs> the company Jonathan works at, the company uh, Ben works at, and the company Julien Minet works at. Uh, so that was not far from home. But once we got the the ball rolling, um, then then yeah, it it, it uh, went really well. Uh, we should invest some more in it again. Uh, but we've had other problems to deal with uh, the last year. Um, uh, which others? Tom Tom, which is also present here. Mabox as well. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and in the uh, in the European con uh, context, I was thinking I, there is a huge amount of funding in the EU, um, and if two local chapters can get together and work across borders, I think that's one of the the interregio stuff. It's really something where there's a lot of money, but we have no idea uh, 
how to start with that. Um, and I, I, I think that's one of the places where uh, pooling resources uh, to see where where we can work together to to uh, you need to invest something to be able to get something from there. Um, I think there's there's real uh, potential there. Um, and also, like I, I'd like to know what you all are doing. Um, I think there's there's uh, a lot to be learned from that. And I don't think there's a lot of talk about that. There is Courtney online saying that uh, when Marianne, Marianne and I were, were trying to build the community engagement program for TomTom, Tom, it was really helpful to be able to find OS Belgium a clear instruction about to help and sponsor. And the way they explained the benefit made it possible for us to get approval by, uh, from our boss. That's and that's Marianne. <laughs> okay, that's why you needed the link before. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah, but I think uh, uh, there's an important message there. Like, uh, speak the language of the people who have to decide to give you money. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we're that good at it because maybe we're too honest sometimes. Um, Yeah, yeah. Just make it clear. You're, you want to, yeah, uh, that they're welcome to support you and what it means and how to do it. Uh, I think that's a good start. Have you found any challenges with now that you're accepting money? There's kind of a an expectation of a certain level of service, and you guys are volunteers. Um, has that been an issue? Uh, on the contrary. Uh, I feel that we should invest more in uh, hey, hi. <laughs> uh, in um, uh, in actually talking to them. Um, so, uh, too few questions rather than too much for now. Uh, so I'm 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 a bit afraid that we don't offer enough value at this moment. Uh, but yeah, we work on that. I think there was a question in the back. So. No, no, okay. Um, so yeah, we al already talked about this in the opening session a little bit. Um, so yeah, State of the Map Europe, can we make it a, a new tradition? Um, uh, I see nothing, that's nice. Um, okay, I don't have more details about that, but um, we now right now, so we did it as OpenStream at Belgium, and basically it was Ben. Uh, we started off with, with uh, Ben and myself, but then yeah, our umbrella started falling apart. I had to step out, um, and uh, and then yeah, obviously uh, we had the TomTom -tom help, um, but it would be um, I think it would be interesting to to keep doing this, um, and maybe we can get back, get discuss about that as well. Yes. That we could uh, in the next year making state of the map in Poland. We're, I, I think someone someone said um, uh, that, uh, oh yeah, that uh, they do a vote at the end of the conference, like where is the next uh, event going to be? So we were thinking we'll just do a vote between everyone who said maybe and the, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and, the, and the one who wins. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can have a different color pin on the map. Uh, um, uh, yeah, let's let's discuss further um, about what what the options are. Uh, I think next year would be a very good year to do it because we have no uh, state of the map in Europe. Uh, on the other hand, it's already November, so it's yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we've been thinking about doing a Nordic one, but it's uh, it's a very small and uh, disparate community, so we need to gather them in one place. But it's uh, also a very small thing, so and it's hard to do the first one. You never know how many people are going to join. Yeah.
we may think again uh, maybe the the organization of the world open street the state of the map uh, maybe one year uh, every two years or something like that uh, because moving around all around the planet is becoming really an issue and um, and having well organizing things like that uh, I think it's uh, in other uh, in the past uh, life I was in sport uh, competition organization and for example um, in paragliding the world championship is every uh, two years and the other year is the continental championship so it may be a good logic a good thing to to do and it's not that easy to find uh, venues for a uh, state of the map uh, world so it may help also yeah we were already thinking about the next one Um, I'm Katja. I'm from the I'm from the um, local chapter Germany. We uh, do the uh, Foskis conference every year, and we talk about uh, to do this. Uh, you say it yesterday, and we are not sure um, what we can do. But uh, I think it's a good idea. Um, the Foskis Association is the local chapter for OSGEO for uh, Switzerland and Austria. And we make this Foskis conference, and um, we can make it together with Switzerland or, or uh, Austria. I think it has potential, but I'm not sure. We have to talk about it. <laughs> it's a good idea. Yes. <laughs> and I have, say, two points. Uh, as, as part of the organization of last year, Phos4G, both Phos4G 2022 in Florence and State of the Map in Florence. And uh, what I think is that, that idea, in the sense that for me, it doesn't make sense to have Phos4G, maybe a local Phos4G, Phosphor, say maybe every the State of the Map and an Academy conference, say the people that are participating are almost the same or complementary. And there could be that someone are both interested in both. So having maybe State of the Map Europe together with another kind of big conference that could be related to Europe could be something very interesting. We try to do it uh, with Luca De Luca, that was the chair of Phosphor last year. Uh, we tried to propose this to the foundation, but was maybe something that could go ongoing. And maybe we can try to, to have it to a local Europe, to the European level and to try to understand this. Another suggestion that I can say that uh, I'm also part of the working group for State of the Map. And I think to having that, a working group is something that is useful because you don't uh, every year restart from zero with new people to organize conference that I believe this is something uh, uh, quite complex and you can have uh, at least, let's say, a coordination of. So maybe there could be a working group participated from the local chapter that are in Europe. And you can also share the, the resources, for, for example, Wikimedia Italia, talking also about budget, we based on donation of people from their taxes. So we have, also, I was checking next year, we are planning to have uh, half a million from these. So it's quite scale up, but we can have also people working on that and they are working by Wikimedia so they can spend their time on that. So maybe you, all of you maybe know Anisa. And uh, um, so this can be helpful to have maybe some reference people that know which are the projects we start the step. This is wonderful done by Christine uh, on the glo our global level. And maybe this can help uh, to have uh, some steps, some reminders, some kind of activity that can be easily uh, promoted and having the conference in the next year, in the next year having clear what is going, what is needed. Yeah, and I, I think having that kind of uh, continuity uh, is, is really a big part of, of uh, I'm making things easier. And I think also like the, the amount of work in the last two months, that's really crazy to ask volunteers. Uh, so yeah, I think I, if we have a profit this year, which is still not sure, uh, then our, uh, or we've always said we will keep it for the next edition. Uh, so that they have some starting funding because that will make your life so much easier um, and then you can decide to uh, to maybe pay someone for a little bit of time to to make your life easier um, but yeah if there's other avenues to that kind of support I think that's really important actually now that you just mentioned like yeah maybe you will have a profit um, no, no just it's something that never occurred to me when I think of a conference I just think oh so much 
work that goes into preparing all of this months and months of work of so many people. And I talked to some uh, U.S. people who were organizing State of the Map U.S. And they just said, if you run it in a good way and things go well, you also make a bit of a profit, which you can then turn into other activities. So I think anyone who's interested in setting up something up either in their country or like uh, being Nordic, Europe, and w whatever the uh, the scale is, just to also think of it's not just this huge amount of work and then the conference and then it's over. It can also uh, yeah help you fund other activities and then it be, just becomes this kind of feedback loop. So I, I'm, I'm being optimistic here, but I think this might be uh, something to think about. Yeah, I, uh, I could directly add to that. Uh, I'm Greysa from Kosovo, uh, co-chaired Phosphor-G uh, this year. Uh, basically, we made some profit at the end, and uh, what we've decided is that going forward, we want to use those resources, that, and we've founded kind of a group, Open Spatial Kosovo, where we're bringing together uh, all the local chapters that work with a similar community because it, as it as it was mentioned in Kosovo, the community is very small. So what we're doing is that the profit from Phosphor-G we are putting into building this community further, uh, especially for this this coming year. Maybe uh, about that idea to, to use the profits to start building something. That's basically what we did with Open Knowledge Belgium. Uh, so we had two cash cow projects and those were enough to hire someone full time to yeah to do other things as well. So they their main task is doing those projects and then with the time over they can start building the organization more. There's a certain risk in that if you grow too quickly, too bigly, and then have a side project that explodes. Um so that's something to <laughs> don't mention the war. Um so yeah, that 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 can happen. But you have to, if you're smart about it, it can be really I it can definitely work. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, it was also our plan to, after this conference, create sort of a playbook of how to organize a state of map conference, because it's true that there's a lot of people who have this knowledge and it's experience, but you sort of have to, as a person relatively new to organizing a state of map, you sort of have to get it from everyone and it takes a lot of time. So it would be nice to have it all in one place to make it easier to sort of transfer to another person. So that is a goal. We haven't started on it yet, but. There's a whole, um, on the wiki, OpenStreetMap wiki, there's a state of the map planning that can be found, but keeps getting forgotten. And it's a wiki, so edit it, add what you've learned from state of the map Europe, please. Um, it might be more detailed than it needs to, but it's worth looking at. That's really good. Uh, we're going slower than I expected, uh, but I think that's that's good because this is interactive already. Um, I, I, I'm thinking that maybe we uh, should do a, a birds of a feather thing as well for those who want to do go more into more detail into some subjects. Uh, I'll put something on the schedule for tomorrow, I think. Um, okay, so yeah, I'll go to the thing right after. Um, so uh, here's a few examples of things where we thought, okay, this should work and it's not. Um, so here it's more like, okay, why why is this not really working? And I don't mean it's it's working for us. Uh, for example, this thing is working for us. It's just that we thought, okay, this this is something that is easy to to extend, and it's not happening. Um, so um, uh, yeah, it's I don't know if everyone saw the introduction yesterday where uh, I went into some detail about that. Um, but uh, should I quickly? Explain it again. Yes. Um, so uh, what we do is we have the official data of all the roads in Belgium, uh, which is of course in three different uh, data sets, um, and which is really good. Um, it's not perfect. They have some nonsense in their data, but if there's a new road being uh, constructed, then it will be there within uh, a reasonable amount of time. Um, and so that was our main goal. Eh? You have all the time you have new roads being created and we want to be sure that they are in OpenStreetMap as soon as possible. Uh, and since a lot of those new roads are like a little bit out of the way, they're dead end streets, they're in the middle of nowhere, uh, everything else is already mapped there. So people don't go looking actively everywhere to, to find them. Um, so the chance is very high uh, that they're not mapped yet. Um, so what we do is we have a continuous process that looks all the time 
at the official data every time there's an update or well depending on the service excuse me um and it's very simple it just it works on github actions it makes a little buffer around the official data um i'm always mixed up but it detects the segments of roads that are not in osm yet um and those are automatically pushed to map roulette um where they become a new task and where we can also say like, hey, this is nonsense. Um, and uh, in fact, we gave some of that nonsense back to the government. And at first they said, that's not true. And then they looked properly and they said, yes, this is true. Uh, and they fixed uh, a few hundred cases uh, based on our input. Um, so that's, it, it really helps to build relations, I think, when, when you can see that there's such added value in the two directions. And one of the big things as well about doing this is that now when you try to sell OpenStreetMap data to people in Belgium, you can say, hey, it is as complete as this government data that we all know is pretty good. Um, there's, uh, I, you can see on our website, we have a, a statistics uh, page um, that's often broken. Uh, statistics page, you can look at the map roulette task to see the number of segments that are still missing in OSM that exist in the official data. Uh, so it's basically nothing. And so when you can prove that you're at least as good, at least as complete as the official data, um, but people also know that in many ways we're better than the official data. So they know they're not really losing anything, but they are gaining a lot. Uh, so that really helps to, to sell uh, the use of the data. Because that's, that's for, especially for people in government, uh, and I think for commercial companies as well, that kind of criteria is really important. Um, uh, so yeah, how, I, yeah, okay. Uh, so again, how does this work? It's simple GitHub Actions, uh, takes the data, makes the buffers, does all the computing. Uh, it's kind of crazy that it works, I don't know why, uh, but it works, it's been working for a long while. Um, and the only thing we need to add a new region or country is a link to the data uh, and a filter. Um, and then, yeah, so so uh, what has happened? Uh, we've done it for Kosovo, Luxembourg, and Netherlands, apart from uh, Belgium. Um, and in uh, Luxembourg, it really worked, or I don't know, they only have four tasks open, so maybe they <laughs> always only had four tasks. Um, um, but for the Netherlands, yeah, there's 20,000 tasks, and that's a little daunting. So maybe they should split it up and, uh, and try again. Uh, but it never took off. So you need some people behind it who promote it within your community, otherwise it's not gonna work. I think in Kosovo, it never really took off. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, it takes, uh, but yeah, it's that easy. Uh, and we feel like it's that important, but we don't we don't get requests. So we don't really know what's going on. Maybe, maybe you have other tools. Uh, um uh, with strings you mean just like a list it works with any road data set um not right now it's but the kind of flow could be adapted it would be a bigger project but it's it's you could use the logic for something else i think um and that's also like right now it's just like it's focused on does this road exist or not uh, but it's built in such a way that you can write your own comparison process and just plug it in there. Uh, so if you want to do more advanced stuff, you just you don't need to build the whole infrastructure. You just have to build the logic. Yes. Uh, no, we did not look at overture data yet. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it might be, might be interesting. Yeah, um, the one thing that is maybe relevant is that this is, uh, if if you're looking at a country where uh, there is a huge uh, difference between the uh, the external data set and OSM, then this might not be the tool. Um, there's other tools that take more massive amounts of uh, data and give you like a, an almost prepared change set of of 50 roads. Uh, where you just have to validate and, and click them together to the network. Uh, so then this is not the best approach because every little segment will be its own task with road completion. So this is for when you have two networks that are really almost the same. You can achieve that even with, with different, I, you can achieve that by smart filtering as well. Uh, so for example, we wanted to avoid, we want a mapulet task that's easy for uh, to do from your desk 
so we didn't did not include uh, parts. And you could like if if um, uh, the overture data has a, lo a lot of tracks that are hard to interpret, um, but the main road network is close to the OSM network, then I just filtered that part, and it could be useful. Yes. Would there be any interest in collaborating on the same thing for sidewalks, footpaths? Do you know if there's any good government data sets in Belgium that um, have sidewalk data? Okay. Uh, not everywhere, at least. Maybe in maybe in Brussels. I have a more general question. Uh, thinking about how to use uh, official data into OpenStreetMap. Um, it, it's about, again, licenses. Just curious uh, how the, the government is licensing the, the data. We had, and uh, I present also in the afternoon, uh, experience with the National International in, uh, Geographic Military Institute, who released the, in ODBL. So fine, but the contributing terms it's quite tricky about importing things. That just how, how are you managing this? Uh, by not importing. Um, we are using the data for inspiration. We're not copying. Um, so it's, well, not really because the data is, we could import the data with the license they use. Um, uh, so we did avoid, like the NGI uh, has a similar data set for Belgium, but it has a restrictive license. So yeah, we don't, we just don't go there. Um, but if there's edge cases, I think you can you can wriggle around because you're not really importing. You're just uh, uh, you're we're not copying geometries. we we are systematically looking at differences. But I think Google is also doing that with our data, um, and so if they can do it, we can do it. Uh, um, agree that the OSM Foundation can change the license in the future so that uh, ODBL released by others are not uh, implicitly <laughs> ready to be, so the, the releaser uh, maybe uh, is not agreeing that the, the license that's share alike can be changed in the future, right? Yes. Yeah. I. I think that's. Yeah. I, I mean, with those kinds of problems, I would recommend talking to people and say, "Hey, can we get like in a letter of permission?" Um, but yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It can be. It can be complicated. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. There's. We tend to say like. Uh, Sometimes it's easier to apologize afterwards instead of asking for permission first. But um, so I had a few more topics, um, but I think we're running. We're, we've run out of time. Um, so I will use the workshop input for the birds of a feather thing. And I'm sorry we didn't make it that far, uh, but I think this has been rather fun. So I hope you felt the same. Um, maybe we have two more minutes. One more minute. We don't have any time left. We don't have any time left. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is behind. Okay. Thank you.